Mr. Grouper isn't retro. And he also really needs to move into his own place. Carson Lazarus is turning out to be a wonderful employee. Thanks for your cooking experience behind bars. Hmm. Okay, sometimes she cooks for 200 when we only need 20. I feel stress sick coming on. How am I supposed to confirm it without a selfie? An old school addition to the lab kit today. Takes pictures. I need to show you something. Go for cover. Okay, Retro used the words river, flood, and drowning on purpose. What's with the ancient scroll? It's a map I made with Glenn. Oh, like Google Maps, but made of paper. Maybe Retro plans on contaminating the community pool. It's Olympic size. That's a lot of agua. Or the laundromat. Maybe he just needs to wash his creepy mask. He's always wearing it. It's gotta be gross and sweaty inside. Is it broken? Where are the pictures? I see no pictures. That's not how it works. You have to get the film developed, if you can find a one hour photo. One hour? Like a whole 60 minutes? That's 3,600 individual seconds. What's the point of taking a selfie if you have to wait an hour to see it? That's it. Retro's message has been right in front of us. He means the dam. Retro's going to flood the city. How do you know? Last semester, my Earth Science class took that field trip to the Maywood Glen Dam. The locks of the Maywood Glen Dam, which hold back two trillion gallons of water, have recently been fully automated. We don't even need a staff. Question? Excuse me? Pardon me. Pardon me. <laughs> Doesn't the dam also hold back sediments which would naturally replenish the downstream ecosystems? Uh... I'm not sure. Well, I am. The dam blocks fish migrations. All those little baby fish separated from their mamas? I just know what's on my cards. Uh, let's not forget, dams have plenty of benefits, like water storage, irrigation, and flood control. Yes! In fact, in the event of a major power outage, a propane generator will help keep these locks locked. The dam's control room requires at least 15,000 watts to stay operational, but the dam's backup generator propane tank only has a 500 liter capacity. Meaning we only have four hours before power runs out. The locks disengage and the spillway's open. Flooding everything in its path. Streets, homes, businesses. The town's power grid will be destroyed. Adios Maywood Glen. Espanol is usually my thing, but it's an emergency, so I'll share. But where are we gonna find another power source for the generator? Wow. This is so oh, cool. this is oh my word! Oh my this is okay. so cool! This place is off the charts. Over the next four days, you will train for a simulated shuttle launch, travel on the space station, and live on Mars in our deep space habitat geolab, or HAB for short. A mission that would ordinarily take nine months. Oh, this place is awesome. Did you see that deep space glove box? They use it to study samples collected during spacewalks. I mean, <laughs> how about that trash to gas reactor developed to recycle in deep space and convert it to methane and other gases? I think I'm dreaming. Well, I must be dreaming too because there's no way little Cameron Coyle belongs here. For reals. The good news is technology. Justin's brother Zach, one year older and ten times more irritating. Now. Straight from the International Space Station, currently traveling 220 miles above the Earth, I give you Destination Mars Camp graduate, flight engineer, Chris Bryant. Welcome, trainees, and congratulations. Your acceptance into the DM program is quite an accomplishment. And I should know, I attended Destination Mars Camp, and now I'm here floating in micro G. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. I can't believe that. Amazing. That's so awesome. Oh, that's so cool. I, I need to try that. That's... But I'm here to tell you, this is no summer fun camp. This program will be challenging, so stay on your game. In space, things go wrong, but it will be your job to work together to solve problems as they arise. Because on Mars, your life and those of your fellow astronauts depend upon it. So, for your first question, who can tell me what the Mars atmosphere is made of?
Well, then I hope next time we speak, one of you will have the answer. Until then. Why don't you all take a few minutes to introduce yourselves and we'll get started. Dad, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you again for letting me come here. You're very welcome, sweetheart, but you're the one who earned this. Are you sure it's not too expensive? Oh, I'm sure. I'll go meet the others. All these submissions are amazing. <laughs> that was very sweet. Yeah, yeah, she's a great kid. <laughs> I'm Jenny. Jenny Wallace. Charles Coyle. My friends call me Chuck. Oh. Actually, no, that, that's not true. Uh, no one calls me Chuck. I don't know. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> let's, let's just stick with Charles. Okay, Charlie it is. <laughs> That's my daughter, Tessa. It's a silver-based astronomical telescope. Not only does it have a high reflectance rating, but its coating makes it less susceptible to stress in the Mars atmosphere. <laughs> Amazing! I can't believe you made that. So this is what you submitted to get into the Mars camp? Yep. It's a retractable treadmill built so astronauts can exercise more. In space, Due to microgravity, our proximal femoral bone loses up to 15% of its mass per month. You mean 1.5% bone mass per month, right, Gordon? Right, of course. Either way, it'll help me keep my awesomely toned bod on <laughs> Mars. Mm. I'd show you both a real six pack, but it'd be like staring into the sun. Please don't. First lesson of DM camp, don't pay attention to that guy. You know you can't do that, Camelot. Space, I'm a bright shining star. Camelot? He even sounds like Justin. Where do you think Justin learned it? Would you like the records printed or viewed as a PDF? PDF, please, but hurry, Miles. Getting too risky. We'll have to come back. No, I'm not leaving without proof. Dad is innocent. Huh, here you go, sir. It was buried deep. Okay. <gasps> Wait! Miles, please erase the database from the time I returned home until I leave today. Keep no record of this visit. What visit, sir? <laughs> I can't believe Stone destroyed my father's reputation. And because of him, I never got to know my dad. Well, now, this is gonna take him down. There, there, Pumpkin. Adrian, get him some nice hot tea. It'll calm her rattle nerves right up. Kim, please. Sorry, I was still in character. Look, I don't get it. Why would Stone have no regrets plant a bomb and point the finger at a bunch of protesters? For sympathy? Makes him look like a victim. Or as a distraction. From what? Maybe it has something to do with what we found. After the surprising results from our H2O challenge, where stone water and tap water finished an attack, we conducted a chemical evaluation on both waters. Using electrochemical analysis, we tested for levels of calcium, sodium, potassium, iron, sulfates, chloride, nitrate. You get the idea. Each body of water has its own unique chemical makeup, depending on where it comes from. Think of it as the water's very own unique fingerprint. And what we found is, well, see for yourselves. Maywood Glen water versus stone bottled water. Wait, so what's the difference? Nada. They're exactly the same. Stone water is Maywood Glen water. How can that be true? Only one way to find out. Look for the source. Cam, when I was in Internet Space Inc., weren't they studying the effects of the drought on Maywood Glen's underground water? Right. May I? They're using satellite radar to measure underground water levels. The yellow is Maywood Glen's aquifer, its groundwater supply. The purple shows where the levels have been depleted. You can see it's been pumped and it's low. The blue shows the flow of the aquifer. 
Well, I'll be darned. The main artery of water runs right through Farmer Adele's land. And directly under Stone Acres. And it's where the groundwater is most depleted. Could Stone be stealing water? Contributing to the drought? Farmer Adele mentioned construction trucks coming and going from Stone Acres at all hours of the day and night. But the construction is complete. There's no reason for trucks. Except maybe to transport water. I think it's time we pay those old truckers a friendly visit to check out just what they're really hauling. Dr. Crawford, I'm Federal Agent DeFazio. This is Agent Feeney. We have some questions about the recent break-in here at Space Inc. And the whereabouts of one of your employees who may be a possible suspect. Certainly. Uh, I'm sorry, but you both seem awfully young to be federal agents. We're a part of the New Youth Government Task Force, ma'am. That's all we could say for now. Feel free to call this number at the Bureau. Should put your mind at ease. Actually, I have a contact there myself. Agent Dale Cooper? If you don't mind. Don't mind at all. Cooper's a good man. Just make it quick. Our nation's security is at risk. I'm sure you understand. Five, 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 seven, seven, four, three. Got it! We're in! And we control the phone line. Voice altering app ready? You're all set! Special Agent Cooper's office. Why can the British accent? You want it official? Everything sounds official in England. Yes, this is Dr. Allison Crawford at Space Inc. I need authorization from Agent Cooper regarding to- Agent Cooper's in a high level security meeting right now. Wants to confirm Agents DeFazio and Feeney have arrived. They have. <laughs> Professor Cato did tell me the prototype could be very dangerous, but I can't believe he'd try and steal it. That's why his disappearance is a cause for concern. If he's innocent, he's got nothing to hide. But in the wrong hands, the research could be used as a weapon, making its owner very powerful. If the professor contacts you, you'll let us know? Of course. One more thing. We've learned Olivia James is coming to Space Inc. to improve the menu for Mission to Mars. Uh, yes. Is she a suspect? Not at the moment. But do you have any idea what type of culinary delight she may enjoy? We're through here. It was worth a shot. These wires simulate the feeling of being in low gravity. Ember and Tessa will be practicing the bunny hop, the slow motion jog, and the side to side. All of these maneuvers were used by our Apollo astronauts for their walk on the moon. Whoa, uh-oh! Dude, that right there is why Neil Armstrong called it one small step for man. You're getting it, Tessa. Come on, girl. Follow my lead. Excellent. And that right there is why we can now call it one giant leap for womankind. Son, you just got school. Project MC.